This is the kayak I never knew I needed. I used to be really happy just having a creeker and a freestyle kayak because any time I gave up speed on a river I wanted it made up for with freestyle potential but a 6 foot freestyle kayak needs really specific spots to work well in it can't surf every wave on the river, it's just not fast enough Piranha brought out the Ripper and it might be my favourite kayak of all time I can use that thing on anything from class 2 to class 5 and have a good time in it it is an incredibly diverse kayak, but it has its limitations. For example, it's not that easy to do freestyle tricks in. Piranha started talking about designing a river running freestyle kayak, and I was like, meh. And so I wasn't that excited about the concept of this kayak, but then I saw some of the early renders from our designer, Robert Pearson, and I was like, oh, that could be sick. I had a go in some of the earlier prototypes and I was never at a good location to actually push what the design could do or give it a good try, but I could feel that it had some potential. And then I got to take the finished one around the country and try and find some spots to really test this thing and see what it was capable of. And it was after a week of using it on the river, at the white water park, in holes, in waves, where I, where I thought to myself, this thing is special. Obviously there's lots to talk about in regards to what I like about this kayak, but one of the things that I think is truly special about this design is how good it is for slicey tricks and how good it is for aerial tricks, and you just don't tend to get that combination very often. Most times a slicey kayak is too slicey to pop well, and most times a freestyle kayak is too poppy to slice well. Somehow the Ozone has this really unique blend where it manages to do both and I just I, I honestly haven't come across that before it's It is special. I will say that there's a learning curve to using this kayak And if you're coming from a freestyle kayak You're gonna have to learn how to push longer and really hold your strokes and let the kayak and give the kayak time to get vertical If you try and just snap it around quickly as you would for a six-foot kayak It's not it's not gonna work. It needs time to wind up on its ends and um it definitely took me a day or so to really figure that out, but when I did and I adjusted, I was like, I, I can do every single freestyle trick in this. Maybe not some of the new school combos, but everything on an ICF score sheet goes in this kayak, which I was not expecting that to happen. It sort of goes without saying, but to get the most out of a kayak, you have to have a good spot to use it in, and I still haven't found a spot that is deep enough for me to really slam this thing into the green water and get the biggest loop that I can. I'm often I'm having to like gently tap it in so that I don't hit the bottom and just do a pop out, but I am so stoked to find that freestyle spot that is gonna let me do the biggest loop that, that I can in this kayak. I haven't found it yet, but soon. The volume distribution in this thing is really clever, but what is astounding is its hole speed. I honestly haven't found a way that the ozone won't surf yet, and there have been times where I've looked at these green rollers, you know, they're not, they're not a true standing wave, they're not standing up tall, they don't have a foam pile on them, and in a freestyle kayak there's no way that I would get near surfing them. But this thing just slides straight on them. It is, it is honestly unbelievable what this thing will surf. I'm stoked to get this thing on a proper big green wave and see what we can do in it, because I think some really special tricks can be had. Obviously, with how well this thing freestyles, there's always going to be trade-offs in its downriver capabilities. It does pick up speed really quickly, and it maintains that speed pretty well over boofs and kickflips and stuff like that, but it definitely gets back loop pretty easily. I've used this kayak on everything from class two to some chunky class four, and I would say that's where it tops out at. I think anything much more than class four and you're gonna have a much better day on the river in a different kayak, something like a 9R2, a Macno, or even a Ripper. I'm not saying I won't run hard white water in the ozone because I have some big plans for this kayak in Austria. What I am saying is that it wasn't necessarily designed to go down steep, chunky, gnarly white water. It was designed to make your local river that much more fun. And I think it absolutely achieves that. Some of my favorite sessions 
in the last few years on my local spots for Dee, Bituary and Nottingham have been in this kayak. Sizing wise it comes in three sizes which I think is really cool because then you can choose how you want to go down the river based on how heavy you want to be in that kayak. Um, I have only been using the medium and at 75 kilograms I find this thing pretty much spot on. I think for the medium my suggestion would be the 70 kilogram to the 80 kilogram window is probably a perfect realm. You could probably use it if you were lighter or heavier, but I think that, that that gap, 70 to 80 kilograms, is your sweet spot where you're gonna get the most out of this kayak. Um, and then obviously you've got the small and the large as well. You will not believe how much space there is in this kayak. It is so roomy, it, it is wild. Look at the size of the footrest I have to use. Look at that. <laughs> Again, this, this kayak is just full of surprises. I'm honestly so excited about this design. I feel like we finally have the potential to unlock the entire river. Put the place up